Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from about April 10, 2020, right to the last days of July, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Be sure to stay through to the end where I will have preview horoscopes for each and every sign. And of course, those horoscopes, the full version, at least 15 minutes long, for each and every sign is available on my website, nadiashaw.com, and for free in the superstar space as well. Well, what an incredible transit this is, an important time, no less. As we are beginning this transit, much of the world, a huge percentage of the world, is on some form of self-isolation or quarantine, or maybe feeling like they're on lockdown of some kind. We're being asked to be separate, but the very nature of Venus is to connect with others. It is about joining and allowing others in. It is about attracting and knowing that you are worthy to have joy and pleasure and the company of others in your life. Whenever it is that we are in a Venus retrograde season, and especially when it is that a planet is changing directions, it is especially close to the earth. Now the planet itself isn't actually going backwards in the sky. It is an optical illusion on our part. It is our perception, but so much of astrology is. It's our perception of the sky and its symbolism and how we interpret it and make correlations to our lives here on earth. That is the act of astrology itself. And so a planet, standing still, changing directions, especially close to the earth, its energies are gonna be that much more intense. They're gonna be that much more magnified. But it isn't just Venus, right? Whenever we have a larger retrograde season of any planet, there tend to be certain key connections that that planet will repeat again and again. It'll dance with at least one, and in this case two, important power players that come to characterize this time. And for this Venus retrograde season, it is conversations of tension that Venus will be having, most notably with Neptune, but the asteroid series as well. And so it is Neptune that has been called the higher octave of Venus, meaning that where it is, Venus is love, in a more immediate sense, it is graciousness, it is pleasure, it is Neptune that takes that love higher to universal compassion and connection. It's the ability to see love in everyone, in everything, and in every moment, even when it's hard. Well, that ability to recognize where love is, where it isn't, that is part of the characteristic of confusion. That is one way in which this Venus retrograde season may be realized for some people out there. Now, here are some things though I do wanna say right off the bat. I truly believe that retrogrades are not bad. They are really not bad. And in fact, I was having a conversation recently with my friend, Maurice Fernandez, renowned evolutionary astrologer. And he was saying how it is during a Venus retrograde season that we can attract relationships that are especially intense and especially meaningful. They redefine us in some way. They encourage us to reflect, to understand ourselves more deeply. When a planet is retrograde, its energies are well suited to look inward, to understand how it is that we are fully owning that part of ourselves rather than relying on external events to make things happen or relying on others. It becomes a deeper quest and therefore the opportunity is there for a more meaningful quest as well. And so yes, the opportunity is there to attract especially intense connections, but more than that, I do want to say right off the bat, even with some of the challenging connections taking place with this Venus during this larger Venus retrograde season, it doesn't mean that anyone you meet, that relationship isn't going to work out or it's doomed or anything like that. I have so many examples. I can't even begin to tell you 
how many examples I have of people who met somebody during a Venus retrograde season, brand new connections that ended up being very important relationships, some short term, but many long term. And sometimes what isn't so clear, which is the case with Venus retrograde, because the energies are so self-oriented, so personal, and with this particular Venus retrograde season, because the energies can also be really confusing, we really may not see things very clearly right away, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a relationship worth pursuing. It doesn't mean that whatever it is that is part of the confusion won't be cleared up and cleared up in a way that maybe isn't even a big deal or lends itself to an especially amusing story because that is one of the most common things that I hear. But I have very rarely, I don't think I've ever actually heard a person say that they regretted a relationship that took place during a Venus retrograde season because they tend to be especially meaningful. They clarify what it is that we really want in love. They help us to see our worthiness, not only to attract, but this sense of knowing that there is love in the world for us, that there's joy, that there's pleasure, that we can be a part of that, part of the romantic experience, or that we can redefine what love is for us. We can elevate our understanding of love. And in the case of this retrograde season, that we can bring love even when it's hard, even when we don't know how it's gonna work out or where it's gonna go, even when the love that is called forward, as much as it may be passionate, which is very possible with this energy, it may actually ask for a higher love as well. So before I move on to some fun examples of what I have known of others who have had uh, romances begin with a Venus retrograde season, I also want to say, because this is something that I'm asked quite a bit, what happens if you're born with a Venus retrograde in your chart, in your natal chart, and Venus goes retrograde and you start a Venus retrograde cycle? I have found that when celestial phenomenon takes place that mirrors what is in your own chart, there's something that is decidedly familiar about it, something that's comfortable about it. And because of that, there's a greater sense of peace and I've also found that if you have a Venus retrograde in your chart during Venus retrograde season, it's like you're able to feel more like yourself. Sometimes those with Venus retrograde in their chart, well, they may find themselves second guessing their own worthiness. They may find it really hard to let go of past relationships, even well beyond the time that they have good and ended. But a Venus retrograde season, and this is if you have Venus retrograde in your chart, helps you to get more honest about where you've been in the past in love, but it also helps you to remember that you can and you will love again. The more critical side of yourself calms down and it allows you to be more you or to feel like you're able to ease into yourself in a more comfortable way. And so in this way, I do think that if you're born with a Venus retrograde in your chart as confusing, right? That's the key word here. <laughs> As mixed messages go, which is going to be very much a characteristic of this time, of this Venus retrograde season, those with Venus retrograde in their birth chart will find that energy of confusion to be less so. Will find the element of uncertainty or feeling like you're not really sure what you feel less than it may be for other people. I'm reminded also another conversation with uh, the great Rick Levine uh, that I had recently as well. You may know him, amazing uh, astrologer, living legend of an astrologer. And so I was saying like, oh, I have Uranus squaring my sun right now. But we were talking and I have this actually in my natal chart. I don't often talk about my natal chart. If you've watched me for a while, you know this. I have this in my natal chart. And uh, he said, ah, it's your cup of coffee. Instead, you get two cups of coffee. 
And that was such a wonderful way to frame it. On the one hand, it was very empowering for me. And I think that's part of what we do as astrologers. We give that other perspective so that it does help us to feel that much more open to whatever a transit may be for our clients, uh, for the people that we may serve with our practice in astrology. And so yes, on the one hand, it did empower me, but on the other hand, I realized, yes, this is an energy that I am very used to. I'm very familiar with this. And so in the same way, when we have celestial activity happening or you have a transit happening in your chart, that is similar to or mirrors something that you were born with, it is going to be much more graspable. You're able to make much more of it easily and to excel at this time as compared to those who may be more unfamiliar with this energy, who may not have been born with this given energy. Okay, so now let me give you my examples that I think are uh, wonderful ways to understand Venus retrograde season. One example, a dear friend of mine, uh, many, many years ago, she met somebody. Um, it was a very passionate, very quick moving connection. And they got married like soon after they met and all was right in the world. And then come to find out decades later, some 25 years later, when there was some activation happening of Venus and it was a Venus retrograde again, no less. They get a knock at the door, come to find out that his first divorce, some paperwork wasn't filed properly and it never actually happened. And so they didn't realize it, but basically her husband was a polygamist. And anyways, they had a big laugh about that. It was able to be resolved rather simply. They just had to file some paperwork and have it done with. Um, but they actually really enjoyed this. They ended up having another wedding and they had their adult son there and uh, all their friends got a kick out of it. And because they were a lot older, a lot more established, they were able to have the kind of wedding that they always wanted to have, but couldn't have before because they were very young and starting out their lives. And I thought that that was such a beautiful Venus retrograde story. Now, another Venus retrograde story is knowing somebody who actually uh, very unexpectedly ended up in a short-term romance with somebody and you know thought that he was the bee's knees. I don't know if people still use that expression, but the thing was, and the opportunity for her was, it was a short and very intense romance. But as part of that, she realized that she perceived this person as um, better than her. So her concept of what kind of person she could attract in her life, how they would look, um, and really it was a very aesthetic kind of thing. She thought that this person was way better looking, uh, way better class, I guess you could say, which is a horrible way of putting it, but yes, she had internalized that messaging, that belief as to what and whom and what kind of person would actually be attracted to her. And then this example shows up and just had her seeing herself and everything very, very differently. Well, it turned out on the other side of it, it was very short and brief. And then, you know, they separated, he kind of went a different way. And then when they ended up reconnecting, like way on the other side of the Venus retrograde season, as it was wrapping up, as Venus was leaving shadow, she realized, wow, this guy's kind of sleazy. <laughs> so she was like, oh, I don't want anything to do with this guy. I thought he was the bee's knees, but he's really not. But that exploration that she went on stayed with her. It allowed her to be open to love in a way and learn things about herself and internalized messages about her worthiness of love, about her own beauty, about her own ability to attract. And that healing that happened as a result was invaluable to her. And finally, a third example I'm gonna give you before we dive in specifically with this Venus retrograde season. Um, somebody I know, again, met somebody as Venus was going into shadow, the day Venus goes retrograde begins a very passionate affair. The day that Venus goes direct, finds out that there's a huge age difference between the two of them, some two decades age difference. 
um, which she hadn't anticipated at all because both of them had lied about their ages when they met. <laughs> so it wasn't meant to be anything, but it ended up being something. And then they found out that, oh, wow, okay, there's an age difference here. And uh, she really didn't know how to feel about it. There was this uncertainty for about 24 hours, but the relationship was so good. The relationship was so right that they were able to navigate it with a five minute conversation. And they have been together for many, many years now. So I share all this with you because, oh, I have another example as well. Look, I got a lot of examples I could keep going on. Somebody who had been asked out by somebody like years ago, uh, said no because of what was happening in her life, but she kind of had her eye on him, but she dismissed it uh, outright. And then Venus went uh, into shadow and that person asked her out again now that she was single and they ended up getting married and being together happily ever after. They've been married now for a few years. So lots of examples I could give you. And so I share this because I am very much of the belief that whatever comes forward during a Venus retrograde season, it doesn't mean it is limited and restricted to the Venus retrograde season. Now there's great things about that and maybe not great things about that as well. Now, the other thing that Venus retrograde season is notorious for that a lot of people like to talk about is this idea of exes coming back around, us contacting exes in some way feeling as if the past is repeating itself or returning in some way. And that is very possible with a sky like this, but with all that nebulous Neptune energy. Well, it may be the case that by reconnecting with people from the past, you're either feeling as if those experiences leave a lot to be desired, or it is also possible with this, that a part of reconnecting or reawakening past bonds, right, whether they were attractions before, whether they were full-on relationships, is to bring some healing. That healing might involve closure. It might involve another chance. It might involve facing past disappointments, being willing to look at them, or at least look at them together. These are some possible scenarios that can come up now, but remember the larger lesson. It is always to look at where we are in love and why, how it is that we got here, the ability to reflect more deeply on our journey. And if that requires, or if it ends up being the case that someone needs to come back around so that we understand that, well, that can show up at this time. But sometimes it's very karmic. It feels as if there is another will that is having it come together where you get another shot or just another look. But sometimes it's not so much another will. Sometimes it's us. It's us that is feeling such strong nostalgia because this connection with Neptune absolutely could also indicate such a strong sense of nostalgia that we may not be seeing the past as clearly. That it's us that initiates and connects with these people. But just know that it may end up being a little bit of a roller coaster, even if it is just a roller coaster of emotion and where it was disillusioning before, either this retrograde season is going to give us a chance to realize the roots of that disillusionment or to feel the same way all over again. But if that wasn't necessarily the case, if it just ended the way that it did, maybe it wasn't necessarily a sense of disappointment that brought it to an end, but other factors, well, this is going to be a chance to see through some of the fantasy or the what ifs to realize whether or not there's something tangible there or not. Especially because of one of the defining characteristics that I have mentioned already a few times, Neptune. So it is gonna be as part of this larger Venus retrograde season that Venus is going to have an ongoing dance. It is a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. It is a conversation of tension, um, but also of motivation as well. But when Neptune and Venus speak in this way, it heightens confusion and uncertainty. 
Now, outside of love, this conversation is notorious for uh, really encouraging you to stay away from any big changes where it comes to the aesthetics of your life. And so, um, changes of hairstyle, new hair color, like if you've done something before, it's different. But if it's something really brand new and really out of nowhere, a totally different hairstyle than you've ever had, totally different hair color than you've ever had, that's where I'd invite you to be careful because really the results may not be what you think. A totally different wardrobe, I have found, I have gone on a shopping spree or two, you tell yourself you won't, but then we go into Venus retrograde season and all these people wanna start experimenting with their look you end up buying a whole lot or spending a lot. It is infamous for racking up credit, which tends to happen. I know that right now, because of what's happening in the world, there may not be a lot of choice, but I'm talking about um, the stuff that is Venusian. Ven Venus is not about the necessities. Venus is about the pleasures of life. And so where it comes to the pleasures of life, overdoing it, and that includes the pleasures of your look, right? I have so many examples personally and otherwise of buying outfits that I thought were a really good idea and then Venus goes direct and it just doesn't look the same anymore. A few Venus retrograde seasons back, because I've been here for a while, you may know, I've been here for a little while, but I remember sharing with you guys that there was this one Venus retrograde season I had where for some reason, up until that point, like that year, I was wearing a whole lot of black. My solar return had Pluto conjunct the ascendant of the solar return. And that year I was wearing so much black. And then Venus goes retro and I really wanted to start wearing yellow. And I literally bought these monochrome head to toe yellow outfits. Uh, and of course Venus went direct and I was like, I never, never, got into yellow again. You don't really see me wearing a lot of yellow for whatever reason. Let's say it's intuitive. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff that happens with a, uh, with a Venus retrograde. And considering this connection with Neptune, I would say it's that much more likely to happen because Neptune is also about the, the illusions that we create. And I also want to add with this that if you are a person who enjoys tattoos or cosmetic procedures, um, it is very advisable to take into consideration the characteristic of this Venus retrograde season. If you're getting little touch-ups and things like that, ordinarily it's said that it's okay during Venus retrograde because you're going back over old ground, uh, but really doing something new, doing something different is not recommended, especially in the month of May. And that is because it will be in the month of May. So April 10, Venus enters shadow. The month of May, Venus is gonna slow right down to a standstill, officially turning, changing directions right around the 14th of May. So with how slow moving Neptune is, it is going to be as if these two planets hold this conversation of tension throughout the month of May. The exact connections are going to take place right around the 4th of May and right around the 20th. But again, I want you to think of this energy as a block of time where all things Venus are not clear and are not as they may necessarily seem. It is during this time that our own desires, our own fantasy, our own hopes, our own wishes can very strongly color what it is that we are perceiving in all Venusian matters, in matters of love, in matters of money, in matters of self-worth, in matters of beauty, and enjoyment. Outside of that, I just do wanna say as well, with this energy, the Neptune square, it is very easy to overdo it where it comes to things uh, like addictive behaviors, escapist behaviors, like alcohol, uh, for example. So if you are someone who uh, likes to indulge, be a little bit mindful in the month of May uh, that the heightened tendency could be there and where it is that there are some addictive tendencies that can really show up in some people can become a lot more obvious. Now I have said, as part of the great pause, you know, 
that we are meeting ourselves in this stillness and where it is for a lot of people, and I've actually started to see it already among my friends on Facebook and so on, um, where it is that there have been long-standing addiction issues, they are coming forward, they are coming to the surface to be looked at, to be healed, to be addressed, where it is that people have kept themselves busy from doing the work, from seeing addiction as the spiritual opportunity it is, an opportunity to find authentic spirituality, see it as a step towards that authenticity, to not just get stuck in addiction, but to move forward from it, to find meaning from it. And, and this idea comes from a great book called Further Along the Road Less Traveled by Scott M. Peck. There's a whole chapter if you're interested in that book. I do reference that from time to time uh, because it is such a beautiful book and such a beautiful chapter as well. But wherever it is that there are long-standing issues, they may come to the surface, especially in the month of May. But it is for awareness. It is for healing. And that is the direction that we are moving towards. As we get into June and in the first days of June, Venus will connect with the asteroid series in the same type of conversation that astrologers call a square. Now Ceres speaks to care, how well we care for ourselves, healthy ways of caring for ourselves and for others, where it is that we give too much, we care too much, where it is that we are caring in ways that are not helping. Maybe they're not helping you or helping someone else. Where it is that we have bought into false types of care that ultimately are feeding some other need. For example, codependence, right? That isn't necessarily caring about someone else. That is filling a void within us. Where any of that is, that is going to come to the surface at this time. If you think that self-care is a bubble bath, then this particular conversation may speak very strongly for you, may come right to the surface because self-care is so much more than a bubble bath. It may include a bubble bath for some people out there, but self-care is the way in which you choose to speak to yourself, the awareness that you cultivate as to your own reactions and choosing healthy responses and putting in the work to change your responses so that they become more automatically healthy versus the default that maybe isn't so healthy. And sometimes those responses are just the way that you choose to perceive things or look at things, the way that we speak to ourselves with Venus retrograde, that is going to come very much into focus and where it is that we speak to ourselves in ways that are not authentically self-caring. They are gonna come right to the surface. The awareness of that, the opportunity to heal on that level is going to present itself to many of us at this time. And so this is an important conversation, not only in terms of how we are relating to others, but also how it is that we are relating to self. Venus connecting with Ceres becomes that much more meaningful given what else is happening in the sky simultaneously. So it's right around the 8th of June that Venus connects with Ceres in a square configuration. It will be just days earlier that the nodes are going to change signs uh, with the south node moving into the opposite sign of this Venus retrograde, the north node moving into Gemini, the same sign that Venus is moving into. And these changes of the nodes will be speaking to us uh, for the coming year and a half. I'll be here to talk about it as we go along, but suffice it to say, we are having important eclipses that start to take place at this time. In the first days of June, the very first eclipse in years happening in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, this is actually part of um, a larger important eclipse season that is taking place. We are going to have a rare three eclipses taking place back to back to back, so a full month of eclipse season that we are going to be in. The ancients believed that it was the period between eclipses where the veil between the worlds was especially thin. 
And so we're able to recognize our spiritual lessons that much more easily, not get caught up in the externals of our physical environment and what's going on outside of us, but rather we're able to see through the illusion of the physical world and get to the deeper core lesson. And so we will be in that in an accelerated way. Eclipses can feel especially karmic as well because they evoke the nodes, they involve the nodes so intimately. And so retrogrades can also feel very karmic with their heightened energy and heightened emotion. So be on the lookout to what is happening in the month of June, not only around the first week of June with all that's happening with the beginning of this larger eclipse season, but in particular right around December 25th, because that is when Venus will stand still in the sky and go direct. Now, remember how I said earlier, this larger retrograde season that starts right around April 10, it's going to feel a little bit like a non-event. It may not necessarily be so clear right away, but pay attention to what is happening in your life at that time, because you will see it differently. You will return to it and understand it differently once we navigate further into this retrograde season. Well, this is it. Whatever is happening right around the 25th of June will in some way help you to see the events of mid-April differently. You'll interpret it differently. You'll have a new sense of understanding and a new sense of knowing how now you want to move forward and what the larger Venus retrograde lessons have been as part of your unique journey will start to feel like they come together, like they start to integrate more deeply for you. It is as we navigate further into July, the last two weeks of July is when the energy kicks up once again with Venus making its final connections to first series, then a few days later to Neptune, and then right around the 29th of July, leaving shadow, leaving the Venus retrograde season behind us. Now, given how nebulous the larger characterization of this time is, I do think once we move into August, into clearer Venusian skies, it is going to come as much of a relief. We'll be able to start integrating and making sense of the larger learning for us and decide how to best move forward from here. What I love about this transit for us, well, look, I love how strong Venus is when she is retrograde. I'm not promising the easiest, breeziest time, but there is a certain truth that happens when Venus is especially close to the Earth. The truth of what we really feel, what we really want, and then with this Venus retrograde season, facing our own doubts, our own fears, our own uncertainty that we could ever have that is very likely going to be part of the opportunity now. And it truly is an opportunity. It's a chance to look at ourselves more deeply, to own our own unique beauty, to know ourselves as worthy of love and especially worthy of our own love. Now, this can be, and these lessons can be the work of a lifetime, but in many ways we are now in accelerated times. We're getting to see the truth of ourselves in truly meaningful ways. This Venus retrograde season is gonna help in that very journey, help to get to the heart of the matter, the heart of ourselves. And it is there. And by navigating this time, navigating these waters, even when we are not sure, we will know that this is a journey towards greater love and greater wisdom as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. Once again, stay tuned for the preview horoscopes coming up in just a moment where I go through each and every sign. It's the first minute of a larger video that I produce, one for each sign. Each video is at least 15 minutes long. Most are around 15 to 20 minutes. One sign, I actually went up to 30 minutes, so that was an interesting one. But every sign out there um, gets a chance to understand more deeply what this 
Venus retrograde season is going to mean for you in your sign. So you can log into the superstar space on my website, NadiaShaw.com and watch your Venus retrograde special horoscope for free under special horoscopes tab, or you can log into my website and get the download there. Thank you so much to everybody who's already gotten the download for your love, for your trust, all of it. It truly does mean so much to me. And I am truly wishing all of us an incredible retrograde season ahead. I'll be here every single week, of course, as always, to talk about all this wonderful stuff as we go along every week at a time. And I look forward to walking this journey with you. Thank you. It'll be a great transit. Enjoy. Hello, fabulous superstar Aries. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope for 2020. We're going from April 10th right to the end of July. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is set to be an incredibly important Venus retrograde season for a lot of us, certainly for the collective, given that Venus is going to be moving through the sign of Gemini, having to do with spontaneous connections and communications. And for you, it becomes that much more heightened. This is a part of the sky for you that this larger Venus transit will be taking place and that speaks to how well you feel understood on a mind level level, how you communicate, and where it is that you feel you can actually talk to other people and talk about matters of heart. Now, Venus retrograde season always asks us, do I love it? That's the overriding question. And for you, love comes through mind at this time. But there's another interesting phenomenon taking place with this larger Venus retrograde season. And that is... Hello, fabulous superstar Taurus. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April 2020 and right to the end of July 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it truly is a special time as your ruling planet enters shadow right around April 10th and officially goes retrograde in mid-May for a good six weeks, well, it is going to become that much more a powerful time for you, a time of reflection of every area of life. And one of the more important overriding questions is going to be whether or not self-love and self-esteem is showing up in every area of your life. At the same time, of all the signs out there, you are one most likely to experience the financial side of Venus here as you ask yourself, do I love it? And find answers uniquely your own to find income, prosperity, and abundance that truly... Hello, fabulous superstar Gemini. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April right to the end of July 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, what a powerful cycle for you and important and defining time. A key characteristic of this Venus retrograde season is going to be an ongoing dance with Neptune. Now, this is going to amplify uncertainty and may make things not as clear. But the overriding and important question for you is, do I love it? It, person, place, thing, situation. And it is now that you will gain experiences that point the way. It may not be the time necessarily to know what action to take, but it is a time to come to an understanding of your truth, your deeper truth, and what stays and what goes. It is at this time that you get to the root of love in every area of life. And that clarity, which likely won't come during this moment, but after. Hello, fabulous superstar Cancer. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April to July 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, Venus retrograde season tends to be notoriously a time of attracting particularly karmic and intense connections with others. And for you, that is that much more magnified, but also, with an element of the complex. Venus, 
will enter shadow and go retrograde and then go forward in shadow spending the entire season in the sign just before yours and this is a part of the sky that has to do with what is decidedly private and deeply personal it has to do with what you may not necessarily either know or feel ready to shout from the rooftops and it has to do with what is happening on levels of soul and psyche and spirit the karmic element is that much more magnified now whether it is connected to what is happening in a relationship hello fabulous superstar leo welcome to your venus retrograde special horoscope going from april right to the end of july 2020 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here well it is this venus retrograde season that does for you speak very powerfully to your alliances whether that's friendships or group endeavors now this is also a particularly aspirational part of the sky for you Part of the key characteristic of this Venus retrograde season is a series of connections that Venus will make with Neptune, speaking to uncertainty and confusion, and even, I'm sorry to say, but some disappointment as well. But it is while navigating this time that we come to understand more clearly where it is that certain aspirations are well-suited, are meant to be truly for us are the ones that truly resonate with what it is that is an authentic expression and where it is rather that we have allowed ourselves to go down a certain path or towards a certain dream hello yeah. fabulous superstar virgo welcome to your venus retrograde special horoscope going from april right to the end of july 2020 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here well, this is a powerful cycle. Part of the reason that makes it so powerful is because Venus will be spending an extended amount of time in a particularly sensitive part of your sky. But more than that, it is the way in which Venus will continue contact with Neptune in your opposite sign. With Venus moving through the very top of your sky, this is about career and life purpose. This is about how high you desire to go, your understanding of your destiny and your legacy. And with those Neptunian connections, well, it all can feel elusive or uncertain. This is a wonderful time to be doing some important reflection, some important questioning for you to be finding comfort and ease in a space of uncertainty because that as Eckhart Tolle says allows infinite. hello fabulous superstar Libra welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April right to the end of July 2020 I am your astrologer Nadia Shaw thank you for being here well Venus is your ruling planet and when we have this rare Venus retrograde cycle like we do once every year and a half or so, well, it does tend to represent an important time for you. It is a time when it isn't just about your focus on that area of life, but what it says about you, yourself, and where it is that you find yourself in new ways, that you uncover, that you discover new things you hadn't appreciated before that actually are very important to you. This Venus retrograde will be spent with Venus in fellow air sign Gemini. That makes this move that much more, not only important, but that much more easy to engage, easier to navigate. And whereas for some people, this might be a particularly difficult Venus retrograde season, for you, you'll be able to... Hello, fabulous superstar Scorpio. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope from April to July 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, Venus retrograde season can be an intense time. That energy of Venus is that much more amplified, the energy of desire and love. Now, you are no stranger to intensity. You're quite comfortable in it. And it is this Venus retrograde season that is taking place in a part of the sky that you have a natural affinity for. This has to do with life changing events it has to do with transformation regeneration as well as your relationship to financial institutions so let me talk about the money part of it first and foremost because as we are beginning 
this Venus retrograde season. And as I'm recording, a huge percentage of the world right now is in a place of some flux, whether it is uh, that there is self-quarantine, whether there's... Some Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April to July 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a truly special time for you. This Venus retrograde season is gonna take place in your opposite sign, which means of all the signs out there, you are one of the signs most likely to feel this energy in the context of love, and partnership in some way you are considering and then reconsidering the people with whom you have had alignments with and where it is now that you want to go forward this in some ways is going to be a reality check where it comes to love and relationships but it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of reality playing out here i gotta say that's because of neptune there will be a defining characteristic of this time that is because of an ongoing dance that Neptune will be having with that Venus in the larger retrograde season. It will be right around April 10th that Venus will step into shadow. Now, this is Hello, fabulous superstar Capricorn. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April to July 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a powerful Venus retrograde season that is set to take place. And yes, it is Venus goddess of love. For you, this is very much involving uh, your daily life and the people that you interact with every day. So even though a lot of the world right now is in self isolation mode well a lot of this does speak to office romance kind of energy but i do think that with venus retrograde it really is about what you love in every area of life do i love it is the guiding principle and this includes how you're living your life how well you're taking care of yourself the work that you are actually doing the people that you have to interact with where there's love there this is where you will find a renewed passion where there isn't well this is where you start to think about what your options are hello fabulous superstar aquarius welcome to your venus retrograde special horoscope going from april to july 2020 i am your astrologer nadia shaw thank you for being here well it is a phenomenal and important time for you of all the signs out there, you are one of the most likely to experience this energy of the Venus retrograde season in the context of love. But that is a little bit like for better or worse, because this particular Venus retrograde season has a characteristic of confusion and of uncertainty and of disappointment. It is the part of the sky that has to do with heart and what it is that your heart truly desires and wants that is lit up during this time. And this isn't only going to speak to love, but in every area of life. Where are your true passions? Where is your creativity? It is gonna be now that you are walking a journey of exploration and gaining experience without necessarily. Hello, fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your Venus retrograde special horoscope going from April to July, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, if anybody out there is likely to run into, to reconnect with, to spend time with past loves, it certainly is you. It is going to be this Venus retrograde season that takes place at the very foundation of your chart, the bottom of your sky, connecting you to your past and connecting love to the past in important ways. However, there are a series of ongoing connections that Venus will make with Neptune in your sign that are going to come to define this time. And this is an energy of uncertainty, of mixed messages, of mixed feelings. It may also be that some of these experiences that you garner now leave you wanting more or disappointed. And I'm so sorry to say that. But that doesn't mean that this time isn't valuable. Incredible.